This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter from Detroit, Michigan. Her name is Jay Fears. Ms. Fears, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for joining. So uh, I got some information from your team, and yeah. um, you have a new album that's out that's called Gemini. I believe that dropped on uh, June 12th. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about that album because I listened to it and I thought uh, it has something for everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Very versatile. But before we do that, as always, I'd like to get to know Jay a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about Jay Fears. Um, just like you said, singer, songwriter, born and raised here in Detroit. Uh, I'm an actress, singer, a uh, dancer as well, background, professional background dancer. And I have been in the industry for over professionally, probably about what's today, 2020? Right, over 20 years now. Started. 2020. Yep, okay, I had to think. 20, <laughs> so yeah, this, this today is 2020. It's been over 20 years I've been professionally in the arts. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so your book, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I started off here in Detroit, uh, moved to LA to pursue the arts when I was in high school. And uh, that's where I did all my studying, acting, singing, and dancing, and came back home uh, after I got out of high school. And I just finished, pursue I continued to pursue it from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so growing up in Detroit, I, I guess it's probably hard not to want to be in the music business being from Detroit, Michigan, with all the talent out there in Motown, et cetera. Um, so did you always know that you wanted to be uh, an entertainer? I did always know. I What I didn't know is that I could be. Um. I thought that me at the time being so young that only a certain type of people, like this is just what my brain came up with, like when I saw people on TV doing the singing and dancing and acting, I thought that that was just a certain type of people that could do those types of things. So when I discovered that those people are just like you and there is no such thing as a certain type of people, that's when I started to pursue it. Once I figured out that I could. Okay. Did, um, <clears throat> excuse me, did you come from a, uh, a musical family or a musical background? Yes, my grandmother, uh, you know, us being here in uh, like uh, church headquarters, if you will, my grandmother uh, was in the choir. Uh, I think Harold Smith and the Majestics, I think it was. So she was really big in the choir. And my mom was really, did a lot of acting when uh, she was younger. So I guess that's where both of those came from. So I picked up the, the singing from my grandmother and the modeling and just being in front of the camera pretty much from my mom. Okay. My dad can dance really well too. Okay. And so, um, so obviously there was a lot of encouragement in your household having family that's, that was part of the music business as well. Yeah, I was real blessed. They, they really encouraged me. They really stood behind me, believed in me, helped me a lot. Okay. Do you have siblings in the business as well or just you? It's just me. Just you. Okay. So your um, you said you moved from Detroit to L.A. I'm sorry, was that for high school or after high school or? To L.A. for during high school. During high school. Okay. And how long were you in L.A. pursuing this uh, career? 
about three and a half years, almost four. Okay. I till I, until I graduated from high school. Okay. What kind of things did you do in LA? I went on auditions, took acting classes. Once I figured out that when you're in high school, pretty much when you're under 18, they use actors that are over 18 to work because they can work longer hours, don't need to tutor, et cetera, et cetera. So once I wasn't getting a lot of auditions or work from that, that's when I jumped into uh, dancing a lot because you, you pretty much could be any age. Just depends on what the artist might be looking for for that particular event or whatnot. So I uh, jumped into dancing more. I uh, actually ended up getting a job as a hip hop dancer while I was out there and I was in uh, school too. And I was just trying to, I was just jumping into anything, just trying to learn the best that I can in all aspects of the business pretty much while I was there. Okay. Um, and so you were there for, you said three and a half years. You go back, did you go back home to Detroit or? Came back home to Detroit after I graduated from high school. Okay. And when did the, um, when did the singing, when did you start to pursue the singing aspect of it? I started pursuing the singing my senior year. Okay. When I was in high school and, cause that all came about when I was dancing for Aaron Carter. Uh, he's uh, Nick Carter's brother from the Backstreet Boys. And when I was uh, dancing background for him, his mom is actually the one who said, you know, like, I don't know if you ever thought about it, but you should be a singer. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you, Thank you. Like, okay, like now I can actually, uh, let me see what, what this is all about. So that's how I started pursuing that. And then I ended up finding my first producer. I started taking singing lessons when I was out there. And I ended up uh, finding a producer, started working on my first songs and everything. But every everything started really, really fresh in LA and everything started to move more so hardcore when I got back home. Okay. Okay, um, and so Gemini, this is, is this your debut album? It's the debut EP, yes. Okay, um, and how long did it take you to? Uh, well, let me ask you: Do you do you do your own writing uh, as far as your music goes? I do. Yes, okay. I wrote every song on the EP, and there were uh, I didn't do any features really. I just have uh, my hype man just introduced me on the uh, the title track, Gemini. But other than that, yep, no features. I just kept it just all, just wanted everybody to get to know who I was um, for the first one. And then I'm going to venture out more and do more collaborations when I start the second. Okay. And uh, from start to finish, how long has this been coming over the years or did you just you know, sit out six months and just say, I'm gonna write this album. How did the, uh, how did the process go? I wish it was only six months. I started working on this Gemini EP summer, maybe uh, the beginning of fall 2017. So it's three years in the making. Three, three long, hard, struggling years in the making, trying to just figure everything out the songs that I want to use, the, uh, the messages that I want to put out. But um, it, it was worth it. The finished product, it was definitely, it, looking at it, it doesn't seem like it was as much hard work as it, as it actually was. So I am glad that it doesn't look like what it's been through, <laughs> that makes sense. All right. How many? Um, now I noticed that the um, EP is thirteen tracks. How the many? Tra how many tracks with the album Gemini? Mm -hmm. It's thirteen tracks. How many? Uh, how many songs did you actually write? And you, did you dwindle it down to thirteen, or how no, did that? The EP is only seven tracks. Seven. Okay. So, um, so on your website you have thirteen tracks. Is that part of the? What is that part of another album or previous mm -hmm. work? Previous singles that I had released up until I started to release the okay. EP itself. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. And this has come from maybe 2017 and on or 2017. Yep. 
Okay, so the EP, I'm sorry, is just seven tracks. The yes. ones that are posted. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, and so um, this has been in the works since you said 2017? 2017. Okay, now you mentioned that you were trying to come up, um, you said you wanted to convey a certain message. What were you trying to convey with this album? Or this EP, excuse me. I wanted to be different and at the same time I wanted to be myself with which is uh different I am very different I have uh, I sing different songs I you know I'm, I'm just a different artist all around because I like to perform as well like I don't I'm not an artist that just likes to sing and just stand there with the mic like I'm very um energetic when I'm on stage so the messages on some of the songs bring that out. I have like a lot of up-tempo songs and then I have a lot of songs too that I like to try to inspire people to be um, just better human beings in general, pretty much. So there's just a lot of things that I just like that I see. And when I write, I just, I put it into my music and I, and it was very risky because you never, when you do stuff like that, you never know the outcome. Like if you offending people or if people might think like you all that or trying to look down on people, which is not the case because all the time, I all, I don't say like just you, I, I speak as we, because I'm included and I'm not perfect at all. So when I'm writing things, I, I include myself in those messages too. Okay. Fair enough. And um, I uh, read your bio that was sent and I noticed that um, you work with a lot of major artists. Um, in fact, I read that Charlie Wilson um, titled you his protege. Well, he didn't uh, title me that. I had did an interview with another publication and they titled me that. I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm pretty you wouldn't have a problem with it, but just to uh, fact check, that's gotcha. Good. <laughs> okay, got it. All right, thanks for correcting me on that. I thought I read that in your bio. Okay, so um, you've worked with a lot of um, artists and you sung back up with a with many more. Um, was the deal? Did you try to get your feet wet doing background work first, and then sort of go into maybe being a uh, solo artist or pretty much I always did background dancing as a way to support myself so pretty much because I work independent I pay for everything that I do on my own with my music so that's what I take I take that um when I dance and I put that into my my music career so it's been it's been going one and one the whole time okay um yeah this is a i really like your ep but i also like some of your um your previous stuff too which i thought was on the album the um, yeah and so um so with this corona thing we got going on here how has that played a role in perhaps you know release some new music or written out there promoting this uh this album this ep you have well thank Hopefully, I already had all the music done before Corona hit. So during the Corona, it was pretty much time to do all the mixing and mastering and promoting it, putting it together. Everything during Corona was actually getting it out because I had time to. And that was another reason why it took so long because I never really had time to fully focus on the EP because I was always out working for somebody else, whether it be dancing background or doing my uh, side shop around the server at the sushi restaurant. Mm. So by Corona taking both of those away from me, I was able to, for the first time in my life, just focus on my music, which was the greatest feeling. Like it was, so as much as I love my job, it's great people there, but it was just so depressing to go back because I've been back at work for two weeks now I went back the week that my EP came out and I have not, I've been working so much. I have not had a chance to do anything with my music since that. Thank God I actually put it out when I did because I wouldn't have even got it. I would have just fell back into the same cycle and wouldn't have been able to get back to it. 
So, um, yeah, I, I just, it, I did a lot of uh, soul searching and just realized like what has been holding me back all this time is, is working for other people. So I'm glad that I got a chance. I'm glad that everything, even though it, it's such a curse, but in some ways for a lot of people, Corona was a, a blessing in disguise. I agree. I agree. Um, so now you said this has allowed you to really focus on you and um, pursuing your goal or your dreams. Um, I'm just curious, you know, growing up in Detroit, who were some of the um, the artists that you looked up to growing up? Looked up to always first Michael Jackson, his sister, Janet Jackson. I looked up to uh, Aretha Franklin. I ended up dancing for her. I was so strange. Um, James Brown. Uh, I love The Temptations. Any, you know, any, pretty much anybody that you can think of who just really just like went gung ho with they singing or just went gung ho on the stage with with their uh, entertainment. Those are the people I'm just like, oh my god, like I want to, I have to do this. This okay. is. So this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it's what I would, I would look at those people. And still to this day, when I see videos on YouTube or whatever, I still say that. Okay. And uh, just speaking of some of your previous music, you also have a song called Janet Jackson, right? I do. Yeah, I like that too. So, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so that's all. I guess you do kind of look up to or admire Janet Jackson. Have yeah. you ever met her or? I auditioned for Janet Jackson one time, and it was for one of her tours that she was doing. If I want to, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Rock With You tour. And I had made it all the way down to the end to where the choreographer couldn't pick any dancers anymore. He had to have Janet come in and pick because he couldn't decide anymore. So when she got there, she was the one who ended up doing the picking and I had got cut. But I did get a chance to thank her and shake her hand and meet her. So it was all in all, it was it was worth it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um, so Jim and Jim and I. Mm -hmm. Um, where can people purchase that that music? You can purchase it on iTunes and you can also purchase it directly from my website, jfears.com for four ninety nine. Okay. And um I guess touring is probably out of the question for right now. Did you have a big year planned in terms of events and going out and promoting? Uh, no, I can't really say that because I, I, I really put everything, even though the music was finished, I put everything together during the three months of Corona. So I had really planned, I didn't know how long Corona was going to last as far as staying at home went. So I had everything lined up and ready to go for just trying to get things lined up for online appearances such as yourself like doing things like this because i didn't know how long you were going to be inside uh -huh. all right do you plan on doing um i know you're doing interviews like with uh, what we're doing here but i know uh, a lot of artists are doing like ig live is there any thought on doing something like that Yep, I'm going to be doing a concert real soon. I just got to put it together. If I could stop working, I could put it together. Uh, I did my EP listening party on IG Live the week that it came out, and that went really well. And I, it was I, it was actually I did both. I used my iPad and I did a Facebook Live and IG Live. Okay, and you said it went really well. So I'm assuming that Gemini has been received very well by the by your fans? Yeah, people uh, had a really positive response with a lot of the songs. They said that they were feeling them, they really liked the lyrics, they really liked the, uh, the beat, everything. They liked the whole vibe that I had put together. Like I had set the computer down in my kitchen with some blankets, in my kitchen, with some blankets and some uh, like candles. And I had my Christmas lights in the back. I tried to make it look as stagey as I could and they really, they really enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, are you a um, are you a complete are you an independent artist or are you signed to a major label or I'm sorry what's that independent I'm sorry independent okay um, is the goal to um, sign with the label or do you want to do the independent thing 
Not really. Uh, no, the goal is just to get the music to people. So I don't, um, you don't really, I don't, well, I don't want to say you don't. I feel like I don't need, uh, or I, I, that I was, when I was younger, I was seeking that. But now that I can see with hard work that you can do it on your own, a, a great team doesn't even have to be that big. Yeah, I would rather keep the, all the dollars I can in my pocket. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> so um, Gemini is out. I'm sure it's going to do very well. I don't know what's not to like about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I will encourage people to go back and look at some, listen to some of your earlier stuff too, uh, mm -hmm. because that's, that's great stuff too. Um, now you said this, this album or this EP, you want to do everything yourself, didn't want to bring in uh, other folks um, going forward. Um, do you plan on collaborating with maybe producers that you admire or you look up to or you want to work with? Absolutely. Producer. Who are some of the people that you might want to work with down the line? Um, I would love to collaborate with, I love to do up and coming. I love to discover people who uh, never would just think that, you know, just looking for a chance to just get themselves out there. A lot of people are really working hard in their basement, in their room or whatever, making good beats, got good concepts. And thank God for social media, you're able to find these people. These people are able to find me. A lot of people do reach out to me and tell me to listen to their music. So, and there has been a few that I like and I definitely plan on working with them. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, I think maybe before the internet, maybe mm -hmm. you did a label, but uh, with mm -hmm. the internet, you can do a lot of stuff your own. And I, a lot of people that we interview say the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know, they know how the business works. And so, um, like you said, they rather keep all them dollars themselves. So, uh, them. yeah. Do you have your own uh, publishing company or um, label? Um, I have Fearless Productions, but it's, I'm not like signing nobody or anything like that. Like that thing got zero dollars in the bank. So it's just... It's, it's just me right now, but that's what I do, put everything out up under. Okay. All right, Jay. So I think it's a good time to pause. Uh, we're going to play the title track of your EP called Gemini. And this is Jay Fears with Gemini. Enjoy. We'll continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. All right, Jay, we're back. Uh, Jim and I, great song. Um, so I read your bio, and uh, I see that you performed uh, at the Super Bowl yeah. when it was in Detroit. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Great experience. That was the, needless to say, the biggest audience in my life. <laughs> Between the sold out Ford Field and I think it was about 90 million watching on TV. So if, but believe it or not, I wasn't as scared as you thought I would have been. I was actually the one that was coaching the other dancers to relax. <laughs> because i was just like i've always just had that state of mind like as a background dancer i do like i'm singing that's something else i'm nervous out of my mind with that but i'm a background dancer i'm like they ain't here to see us like well, what, are you, what are you nervous for they don't care about you like we in the back and they just be looking at me like what is wrong with you but she might be telling the truth like maybe i should just relax i rehearsed so what am i it ain't, my name ain't john legend or ndirv so i'm fine <laughs> okay that was my next question. i was going to tell you to explain who'd you who'd you back up uh during the super bowl yep it was uh they did was a collaboration between stevie wonder india Irie, john legend and joss stone wow yeah so i did i had parts with india Irie. we did dancing in the street because they did a tribute to motown of course and we did some songs we didn't all the dancers collaborated and did the finale with stevie with like um like superstition his song that he had his single at the time that he had called a time to love and it might have been a couple of like uh what was that song? like so what the fuss i think that song was called just yeah big collaboration big finale 
big fun. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't want you to name drop or anything, but give us some of the other uh, artists that you've worked with or you've performed with. Uh, we already said Charlie Wilson. That's who I'm still currently employed by. Oh, are you? Okay. Yep, I've been dancing for him for uh, 15 years now. Oh. And um, Aretha Franklin, we said, I've done music videos. I've worked with uh, Left Eye, uh, Khalees, Ray J. Um, uh, of course, the, the acting, been in uh, movies and everything. Who else have I danced for? I can't even remember. I, I, think read, I read Howard Hewitt. Yeah, well, no, I opened up. So Howard opened Hewitt. opened up for Howard Hewitt, okay. I performed last summer here in Detroit for a festival and opened up for uh, John B. and Howard Hewitt. Yeah, a lot of those, uh, a couple of those that you have are when I opened up for people. Okay. And Keisha Cole, Boys and Men. Yep, those are all opening acts. Okay. Opening act for all of them. Okay. So mm-hmm. you, have, um, you have quite a resume. I, I must admit, I'm, I'm very impressed. Thank you. I'm working on it. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> All right. Um, so anything else you want to share with us, um, Jay, before we uh, close out this interview? Um, just if, if people, when people hear it, if you guys decide to go over and listen to the music, I would really just love your thoughts, your input. Let me know the songs that you do like. Um, and if you just, yeah, watch the, if you go on YouTube and watch the videos, comment, like, subscribe and everything, and, um, come find me over on Instagram so we can be friends and I can, uh, chit chat with you. All the fun stuff. I'm looking to, you know, meet and get feedback from everybody. Okay. And <laughs> I assume, uh, you're on, uh, you're on all the other social media sites as well. Facebook, Twitter. Yes. Okay. And you also have the YouTube channel. Under my name, Jay Fears. Jay Fears. Okay. And we'll have links to uh, all of Jay's uh, social media sites and actually her website as well on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Also, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, we'll have it in the show. Mm-hmm. All right. Jay Fears. Um, I appreciate you taking the time today. Um, I know um, it's about five o'clock on here in California. So I guess it was eight o'clock in uh, Detroit. Yep, it's wind down time. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And thank you for reaching out. Absolutely. I really appreciate you. Great job and good luck with everything you're doing with you and your platform. I wish you much success. And thank you for having because uh, we do need soul music. And your uh, the title is perfect for what we need. So when I heard it, I was like, oh, yes, bring it, bring them, bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Jay. That's Jay Fears on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Jay Fears. You can find out more about Jay on her website at jfears.com. You can also check out the profile we did on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.